batteries are gonna die on your EV. It's tragic. It's the end of the world, you guys. What is going on? You're gonna drive for three, four, five miles and then need to spend a hundred billion dollars to replace your battery, except all of that's not true because their warranties are very long. A hundred thousand miles, eight year minimum in the US at least. Some manufacturers go quite a bit further and some are gonna go further still. Joining me to discuss this is Randy Kirk uh, from You're This right. Time Not a Digital uh, Purgatory. That's great. And uh, we are going <laughs> to discuss it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. So, Randy, what a week. What a week. Uh, for those uh, just coming out of your coma, good news, the stock is up. And also, um, we've missed you. So there is some good news. CATL uh, is going to warrant its new battery to last for a million miles or 15 years. What is that telling you? Well, the number the number one is the 15 years is going to come first for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue there's probably most drivers will not drive a million miles in their life. This is uh, a lifetime battery. A lifetime battery. It is a lifetime battery. Now, there are some exclusions to it. I've seen that. I don't know if on this one, but it says zero degradation through the first thousand cycles. Now, a thousand cycles, that'd be what? 300 a miles a, a, a charge. You're talking 300,000 miles before you're yeah. seeing any degradation. This wow. means these could be used as vehicle to grid, vehicle to load. Uh, these could be used for other things as well. And I'm sure the warranty would... Um, have provisions in it where the software needs to track cycles rather than uh, miles uh, to add a second tier. Otherwise, they would say, "Well, if you want the, if you want that, you just can't do vehicle to grid." Um, and some vehicles won't be built with vehicle to grid in mind. I would argue most, even when it's common and able, I would say most still won't be using that. Uh, but I think it would be, um, it is now something that you can do with confidence. Um, Forget also, putting your car on also, Turo. You could just leave yes. it in the garage. Yes. I think it, it's obviously going to be really, really good for the taxis um, and other commercial purposes. I mean, that's the thing. The The average consumer, I mean, I think in being on X now for 15 or 16 months, pretty actively, okay, actively, like eight hours a day. Anyway, being on X, I don't think I've, I think I've seen one person who had to go in and get their battery fixed. I think one, and that was actually recently. Um, I don't think I've seen another. So I don't think for the average person, this is not even an issue on a uh, Tesla car. Other cars could be an issue, but not on a Tesla. We saw early SNX, we would see a lot of failures. We would see people yeah. who, yeah. I've only had this car for two years and I've had a failure and I'm barely at 100,000 miles. You're what? You're what? Well, I got unlimited supercharging and an eight-year unlimited mile warranty. So I am making money, Driving. baby. I am making, I'm, there's the, the guys who would drive, um, who would chauffeur you LA to Vegas and back. And they were doing that run how many times? Twice a day, I think. Yeah, Every day, yeah. year in, year out. And um, I know uh, Alex from QC Charge, a local shop that repairs EVs uh, in Portland, he bought one of those cars. Uh, oh. It was it was still under warranty when he bought it. It was like seven, seven and a half years old and had 300 plus thousand miles on it and was on its second battery. And he got a great deal on it because the mileage was so high. And his philosophy was, I own a shop. If something's going to go wrong, I think I know the guy. And what we're seeing is the S and X batteries were awfully good. Not million mile good, not half million mile good, but definitely 100,000, 200,000 mile good. The 3 and Y batteries are absolutely on another level. I similarly don't know anyone personally who has lost a battery on a 3 or Y. And I know a lot of people. You would think I would know at least a couple, but I don't. And I do, do know people who rent them on Turo, who drive them on Uber. Uh, there are high mileage use cases that are surviving. Do yep. the other batteries have that longevity today? We don't know because they're still quite new. It would be easy to argue that maybe they don't. Maybe the first generation Mach-E will see failures at 100 or 150,000. It's kind of too soon to say, but it wouldn't surprise me. And I wouldn't call that a black eye for Ford. What we are no. And, and what we are seeing is their suppliers are already on to the next generation, the better thing. 
And CATL, this is a great marketing move for them. Uh, you know, there is still a perceived problem out there. And to the extent that they publish this and then they are the provider of the battery to an electric vehicle, the electric vehicle maker can now say CATL, CATL inside, or they can say a battery manufacturer on top of us. You know, we'll guarantee it too, but the battery, man you know, there's a lot of ways that this can be used in order to buttress CATL's business and they need it, not because they're not number one, but because I think they're still running at about 60% capacity right now and they could use some more business. They absolutely could. And if we look at this, we see they are number one by more than double the number two right. player. That is a big chunk of the market. And they were building out that capacity either way. And some manufacturers have scaled back their ambitions. They do have. We saw they sold some equipment to Tesla for Tesla to make their own batteries, I guess. Um, and I imagine they will not just sell the equipment, but some of the expertise that goes with it. And that gives them an opportunity to diversify their own market. But Tesla has long said, yeah, we're going to make our own batteries to our suppliers. Rest assured, we will continue buying as many cells as you can produce for as long uh, for the foreseeable future. We know there's a new CATL plant going up just right down the road from uh, Giga Shanghai. From the drone flights, you can see it in the background. And we do know from a video maybe three, four months ago that while the factory was still getting equipped and spooling up, there were already Tesla vehicles on site that were not employee vehicles. These were like hollowed out husks that looked like uh -huh. they'd been torn apart uh, for engineering purposes. So it is very reasonable to assume we will be seeing these fairly soon. Yeah, and I want to also disabuse people of the fact that companies want to become vertical. Most of the time, companies today are not preferring vertical. Now, there's a lot of pressure, as Elon mentioned the other day, to manufacture in the U.S. So the onshoring thing, in particular with regard to strategic products like these batteries, this is a big deal. I agree with it. One of the few things I think the Biden administration did right was they, they're trying to onshore these strategic products. So it's, a, it's, a, it's something that Elon is having to juggle right now. And he even mentioned that juggling that he's, that he's going through. On the one hand, he's got all this investment in the 4680. I'm sure they want to continue to move along on the 4680 path and to you know produce at least their expectation, whatever the, whatever they think they're going to need. On the other side of the coin, the benefit of not being vertical is you have what? You just showed a chart. 15, 16 other companies out there that are working on all kinds of chemistries, all kinds of different approaches, all kinds of form factors, all kinds of maybe completely breakthrough stuff that is not even, even on our radar yet. And in particular, CATL, who practically every three months comes out with something new uh, that they're talking about in terms of chemistries, in terms of longevity, in terms of the packaging, et cetera. So uh, it's, it makes sense uh, to keep your, uh, your suppliers in business and keep them happy uh, in case they become the one that really has the breakthrough. There are three things that have made batteries better. One is chemistry, which is straightforward. The next is the engineering, uh, how the manufacturing is going to be done, what steps are involved. And the third is the manufacturing itself, tighter controls, uh, better tolerances, all of that is going to lead to add the three together and you've got an unstoppable force. And the thing on vertical integration, it was pointed out in the comments recently. And by the way, leave a comment because that's where you make me smarter is not all vertic vertical integration is created equal. Sometimes it is a nice straight vertical line. Other times it's very horizontal and flat where we've got a division over here that does a thing and we own them, but they're not really part of what we do. They're not in the meeting with us. When we sit down and say, do we need this component? They're not there. And that makes it hard. When you bring these outside things back in, it's easy for the bean counters to say, great, now we can count that profit as our profit, but you also have to bring in house the competency, the cap, the capabilities and capacities, because if you just bring those jobs in, but don't know how to do them, it becomes yes. a problem. When I was at the bank, we 
went out for bid to get this new software that would allow us to automate our loan approvals. This is back in the 90s. And the company wanted too much money, so we're going to do it in-house. And what we ended up doing was spending four times as much money for a product we ended up throwing out. Throwing away, yes. Throwing away. It was garbage. It was worthless. And it was predictable because it was just a disaster. And, yeah. and Elon, and just one more last thing on this, Elon said specifically, he said many times, I did not intend to go vertical. It happens when you can't find the supplier that can provide you with the product, when you can't find it at the right price, when you can't get the quality that you're looking for, that's when you start looking around and go, well, I guess I better make it myself. And that's what he did. I have a lot of experience in that range. I uh, wrote the article actually in Inc. Magazine going uh, virtual to vertical about my company. Um, and uh, it's, it's just, no, you don't want to. You ha Sometimes you have to. Yeah. And uh, for those who haven't read it, Inc. Magazine, one of the best uh, publications for Squid. Uh, so guys, in the comments, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it. Randy is on the road this week. He will be back before you know it, uh, bothering us in closer proximity. Uh, and we look forward to it. Uh, so stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop.